What's up, YouTube? Just want to give an update on the sump for Project Fowler. All right, so here's a rundown of what's going on. So we've got two downpipes coming down from the overflow box. Um, this is the eShops PF1200. And this overflow box is very loud. So you can see what I stuck in there. I stuck in some foam um, from some other filter media um, stuff I had laying around and that quieted it down a whole lot and then this last pad here is just a um, Mr. Clean uh, pad for cleaning uh, stove tops I also use it to clean glass on the aquarium so it's got one down pipe and the down flow is very good the one modification that I have to make is I got to drill a hole in the uh, outlet uh, because right now I do get a siphon. But other than that, everything's looking good. So here's the plumbing uh, coming down, and we've got the EV180 uh, skimmer. Uh, you can see the skimmer is making nice foam and nice nasty skim. And when I walk around, I'll show you. Um, what it's going into. So the gate outlet on the skimmer is actually pushing the water over. So we're kind of getting a little waterfall action here. So that actually gave me an idea. I will append a video uh, showing uh, what I'm going to do before I upload this uh, but you can see what the uh, skimmer is resting on um, I have 16 inches of uh, baffle in the first chamber so there are these crates that you can get from Home Depot for like a dollar fifty two dollars and that's what it's it's resting on and I've got the return pump sitting in the crate underneath it And got a nice large refugium. The refugium is over uh, two feet long, gigantic. So I'm looking for some ideas. I do want to put some form of miracle mud in there at some point. Um, but for now, I'm going to show you what I'm going to add. So we have the uh, patented uh, over overflow of the last chamber here. I've been talking about that patent and I've got one layer of filter floss you can see how dirty and brown it's gotten in the first couple of days and I've got some bags of carbon underneath and then I've got another layer of filter floss underneath that so pretty much everything that um, gets past the refugium is going to get stopped here so we have nice clean water going into the return area uh, this is the bubble trap, and uh, this is the Mag 7 uh, return pump. So I'm going to walk around the side here so you can see what's going on. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the display. Everyone's going to roll happy. I just turned everything back on. So there's probably a little debris blowing around the display tank, but uh, everything's looking good. I'm actually gonna do some um, aquascaping. I'm gonna move some rocks around. I took some some um, live rock from uh, Project Cubal over here. I did some rock rearrangement there too. So um, I'm gonna be uh, stealing some rock from this structure here and building another little mountain uh, over here because uh, I've noticed that everybody at night is cramming into this uh, area um, to go to sleep. The uh, Niger Trigger actually goes into the hole over there of this rock. He sleeps there and then Kiki, the um, Picasso Trigger, she's sleeping 
in the rocks right here. So that's where uh, they're going at night. Uh, the anemone has um, kind of situated itself. So what it does is during the day, it'll elevate itself to, to get uh, light and food. And at night, it'll just lower itself down into the cave. So uh, it's pretty much figured its routine out. And that's been going on for a little while now. So let me show you underneath here. So this is where all the uh, skin mates gonna run into. Uh, I had an issue uh, because I had the, the bottle attached here and it was actually overflowing. So I did some thinking and I think the problem was I didn't have a hole drilled for um, air to come out. So I went ahead and drilled a hole in the side here and I, I got a Tupperware container that I was throwing some live sand in um, just in there as some extra um, insurance just in case the bottle's not catching everything. So I'm going to watch that for the next few days. I was over at Big Lots today. I was returning a plant stand that I was intending to put the EV180 uh, skimmer on because it can sit outside of the sump. But after reading about the leaking issues and actually experiencing some of it myself, I decided to go ahead and put the EV180 back in the sump as you saw earlier. So I was mentioning that I'm getting a waterfall coming from the EV180 uh, dispensing water through the gate. And you know, I'm thinking maybe I can make use of this. So over at Big Lots, they have these baskets. The large ones are like $2.50, the small ones are $1.80. And it just so happens that I'm building a sump for my 12 gallon nano. And it gave me the idea of, well, why don't I just set up some chato with some live rock. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna uh, be setting up some uh, Shado Live Rock and I'm going to be hanging it off the baffle and that's going to uh, give me a little bit of filtration action going with the water uh, waterfall in the way it is. It's going to tumble um, through the basket. The basket will keep the Chato in place so it's not uh, blowing all over the place and um, that could lead to maybe um, doing the same thing with some other macroalgae. Uh, I am going to uh, be getting a grow light in the next day or two. It's already on the way. Uh, it's a cheap light. It's not nothing fancy, but it's the size that I want, and um, it has the spectrums that I'm looking for. It's got the, the red spectrum, the blue spectrum, and it does have some uh, 6,000 to 6,500 um, K uh, white spectrum, as well as uh, some infrared. So uh, that light will be here in the next day or so, and we'll see how it grows. But, um, you know, just an idea that I had, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put everything in place now so you can see uh, the next part. Okay, so I had a uh, piece of baffle left over, and I needed to go get some new baffles cut from my 10-gallon sump that I'm building. So, um... Bubby over at Glass and Mirror Services hooked me up and, and cut the baffle that I had down to size so it would fit right on top of the refugium here. So this is actually going to give me a platform to place my uh, grow light. And you can see that I got the Chato in underneath it with some live rock to hold it in place. So you guys can kind of see what's going on here. The reflection is pretty bad. Let me see if I can um, get it from the side. So yeah, I now have a tumbler for my Chato. And I could still do other things such as uh, Miracle Mud down on the bottom 
I've got a sand bed down there, just some black sand that I had sitting around. Um, I figure any sand down there is better than nothing than having a bare bottom. And um, so that's what we got. So there's your $2.50 algae tumbler. Just go down to the big lots or maybe your other stores have something similar. Here is I've modified a Tupperware container uh, to collect the skimmate out of the EV 180. Lots of uh, nice dark stuff coming out. And you'll notice that I've got the, uh, the grow light all set up. And what I did was I moved the basket of Chato down to the, uh, the bottom of the refugium with some live rock in it. And if you'll notice, I've got a juvenile maroon um, yellow striped clownfish hanging out in the refugium right now. He's a little small, I do want to, or it is a little small, I want to pair it with uh, my large one, uh, but when I put him in the aquarium, he was getting bullied so much that he was just hanging around on the surface. So I'm just going to let him grow in the refugium for a few months until he can uh, fend for himself and hopefully be able to pair uh, with the adult clown that I have up top. I may move uh, the basket back up top here and uh, throw the chato back in it. Uh, if you guys comment and let me know what you what you think is better. Is it better to have the chato down bottom or up top? I didn't cut the handle off both baskets so I could still um, set it up there to hang. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for checking out my video. Please subscribe by clicking on the clownfish button.